guys, Coach Victoria Islas from StillMaceWarrior.com. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the third season of the Still Mace Warrior podcast. If you're just listening in, there's two prior seasons, season one and season two, available now. Um, tons of podcast episodes um, for my for my true listeners, the ones that have been um, you know subscribed and uh, you guys have been following me since the very beginning about three years ago. Um, you know, last season got cut short because 2019 was personally like the craziest and hardest year for, for me. So, uh, I cut it short, uh, but hopefully I can make that up with season three. Okay guys. But, uh, thank you for being so patient with me and stuff But um, uh, I'm really grateful, really happy to be back delivering these podcasts for, for you guys for free, you know, still delivering still makes knowledge, still supporting the community by, by bringing all the coaches, um, into one single podcast. Um, but anyways, before getting into the podcast that you're obviously here to listen to, I wanted to make two really awesome announcements. Um, and this has to do with, with my products that just came out. One of them is free. The other one is paid. Uh, the first one is the free still makes guide and it's specifically made for beginners so i mean obviously if you're a coach or you're more advanced um, this might not be the ebook for you so um just you know just skip this but if you're a beginner and you're just listening into this podcast obviously you're here because you want to learn more about still mace training you want to know um, more about how to use the still mace so this ebook is is for you and um the way you get it is by going to stillmacewarrior.com um if you go on my home page you will see a form on there. All you got to do is enter your email and um, the ebook gets delivered to you for zero dollars. Okay. It's completely free. Um, my love for you. Okay. Um, the second one is a 30 day still makes program, man. I was dying to, to do something like this for like the past two years. And, uh, it took me a long time, uh, before I did obviously. So I'm really proud of this. And, uh, I'm really excited to share this with the base community and my followers and my listeners. So the 30 day still makes program guys, uh, it's, it's mostly, um, uh, the goals behind this program is weight loss and still makes a uh, type of strength. Okay. So it's not uh, strength training, but, um, you know, if, if you've been wanting to, uh, you know, lose some weight or get strong with the still mace, this program's for you. If you're a beginner, this program is for you. Um, it's a great introduction it's a great introduction to still mace and uh and if you are more advanced or um or maybe you're an athlete but you're just getting into still mace this still works for you okay this one's for all fitness levels now the really cool thing is that the free still mace guide uh complements the 30 day still mace program so i recommend that if you're a beginner download the free still mace guide uh first uh you know read that uh watch the videos uh there's so much information in there it's an interactive pdf and then from there get your 30 day still mace program okay now because you're listening and you're you're a listener to this podcast i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and offer you guys a really cool offer okay so all you have to do to get this offer is go over to stillmacewarrior.com backslash podcast offer and you guys are going to get the 30 day still mace program for $19 instead of $29. Okay. That's my gift to you for being awesome for listening to this podcast, uh, because that's, that's how you support me. Okay. Um, and so I want to support you and show you some love and, and send you a gift. Okay. So, uh, free still mace guide and you get the 30 day still mace program for $19 instead of 29 bucks. All right. So you get that at, over at stillmacewarrior.com backslash podcast offer okay so just enter that into your uh browser and you're ready to go anyways um i know why you guys are here you guys are here to, to listen to this this first episode on the still mace warrior podcast and i'm super super excited to to release it and thank you again uh for being so patient with me and uh and uh, to a great 2020 guys a great great 2020 to you and to me may the universe always flow with you coach victoria now let's get into that podcast. What's up, Still Mace Warriors? I'm so excited uh, to be back. It's been months. Uh, you know, I lost a little touch with the podcast uh, back in October. I got a little sick, but I'm so excited today. I have someone that I had in mind, you know, for the last couple of months, I was telling him before we got, you know, live on here, um, I was kind of like eyeing out and scoping out who can I have on the podcast. And I definitely have uh, you know, I've been scoping out Ian Tom. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about him. He's a Mr. Ma Mr. Mace Man certified 
Mace instructor. He's a CanFit Pro personal training specialist. And not only that, if you go on his Instagram, super inspirational. He's giving you all kinds of still Mace knowledge um, if you go check him out. Okay. So anyways, Ian, I'm so happy and excited to have you on here. Um, like anyone else, this podcast is all about like sharing your, your still Mace journey. Um, I believe everyone's a warrior. So um, tell me about your warrior journey. Tell me about um, how you got started in fitness and uh, what led you to the still Mace. Okay, I will. Uh, well, I just want to say thank you again for your contribution to the steel mace world what what you've done and what you're doing is great for all of us and uh, like i said before you are an amazing personification of the uh, term hashtag mace unity so thank you very much for that so welcome man. Um, i'm so happy and as far as here. my me too me too thank you uh, as as far as my fitness journey goes I don't really feel like I have as much of an interesting story uh, background as a lot of people would because I don't have a lifelong uh, a history of fitness or different training modalities so I'm one of those people who uh, who hit sort of a dark spot in their life and as as an outlet I needed something now I had mountain biked enthusiastically in my teenage years but um, I basically sat on the couch uh, for my 20s and uh, so that was not so great and major major life changes and I started going to one of our big box gyms here um, that was an eye-opening experience just because I fell in love with fitness so only a couple of months after that I decided not exactly sure why or what my intentions were but I decided to get a personal training certification at least least for for my own information to um i couldn't really afford to get a personal trainer at the time so i wanted to educate myself the best that i could uh sort of the, the, the next steps in that process was i became disenamored with the environment there uh in in those places and most of us know what i'm talking about you know i i wasn't i just wasn't happy in the environment and i wanted to branch out and try new things uh, I got into CrossFit as it started to get hot in our town. Um, we were probably, you know, late on the wave, but when it showed up here, I, I got right into it. I absolutely loved it. I participated enthusiastically in the training and in, uh, in uh, the culture at the time. I, I, I was really into it. Um, however, after some time and a few uh, a few injuries, I basically realized that it wasn't for me in a, in a lot of ways. Uh, so we'll just use the example of I got bored to hell of making a barbell go from down to up. I just, <laughs> okay. it just, it was, it was not interesting to me any longer. And that sort of progressively set me aside from the rest of the environment. And in that environment, um, you know, it's, it's very tribal. So if you, uh, if you sort of start, inching yourself out the uh the rest of the crew whether they're doing it uh consciously or not it's it's it sort of becomes uh you become outcast and that's like that may be a sort of harsh way to put it but it's it's the simple truth and i i may say a lot of things that are just simple truths without sort of uh without sugarcoating them because i believe the effects are uh facts don't care about your feelings so <laughs> that that was the truth there um but the one, the best thing that that did for me was introduce me to kettlebells. Okay. And I think that a lot of people have a very similar track here. Yeah. Uh, so I got in kettlebells. I found a coach that I, uh, I absolutely clicked with. Um, and he was three hours away. So it was a lot of communication. I bought the first book that he wrote and, uh, that sort of went from there, um, under his, under his tutelage i studied kettlebells i got pretty good at them did a couple competitions that he hosted and uh sort of organically i was online and again like a lot of us i came across this guy swinging a mace around uh, all crazy like uh doing some flippy spinny shit and yeah, yeah. uh 
that was uh, that was Leo Savage. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's he's uh, he's so good to express uh, the clamor of the expression that we can get through this mace, and that that catches people, that engages people uh, hard, and it got me. Um, very shortly after that, I got my first mace. Yeah, yeah. It's usually. Um... I think Leo, and you know, there's a there's a lot of shit going on with that, but uh, I think flow really captures people's attention. I think it's the one that draws you in, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Now, I, and I see, I see your stuff too. You're doing flow. You're doing Mr. Mace Man, and the, which leads me to the whole Mace Unity thing. So I see you as a guy who's really open to learning you know everything that you can learn when it comes to mace and i think that's what drew me to you that you're super passionate and you're not super yeah. close-minded when it comes to that no i want it all i uh, i love the mace i also want to be a living embod embodiment of uh hashtag me mace unity yeah and we need we need more people like you i'm not i'm not gonna lie um you know and i keep I keep trying my best to to throw it out there and and to give my opinion when when it's needed. You know what I mean? Uh, especially when there's like hate going around and stuff like that. Uh, especially directed to uh, sadly to the flow community. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm really glad that you know there's people like us that we can yeah we can talk. Yeah, have about none it of that and, animosity. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's not really needed. But I I heard you talking about how the mace kind of came in and when you were in a dark place in your life, right? Yep. Um, do you want to uh, go fitness, that a fitness bit? itself? Fitness itself. Um, okay. Yeah. So, well, uh, simply, I had uh, I had lived a uh, a very bad lifestyle in a very toxic relationship, and um, that sort of that dissolved terribly. And um, to boost myself up, to keep myself going, um, I found fitness. I started training. I started working out, and uh, it was possibly one of the best things I've ever done for myself in my entire life. Right. Uh, and, and, and you know that the magic was there because it was the first thing in my entire adult life that I had ever done for myself. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, and it's cool, man. Like I think we all have, you know, a different story and we all start, you know, that's what makes us unique. Right. So mm -hmm. even though you, you say you started a little late or whatever, I mean, I don't think it's a little late. I think you found a perfect time. I did. Uh, it, uh, you know, you can say all things happen for a reason. Sometimes it really, really manifests as obvious that way. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you, what do you love the most about still mace training? What do you think uh, that keeps you there? What keeps me here is the, uh, the variety of, uh, of gains that we can get from the mace, whether it's a emotional or expressive or endurance or hypertrophy. I absolutely love the fact that this, this is pretty much the do it all tool. And, uh, what made me realize that was seeing flow. And I've always been a creative person. I've always been somebody who needed to, uh, needed to be doing, you know, just, just a little bit more with my life. Um, or trying to make an expression of the things that I do on a daily basis, whether I was doing art or music. Like I've, I've always sort of made a little bit of money off of the things that I liked doing, which is something I'm always going to be proud of saying. I was, I, I was into cooking and I had a cheesecake business uh, called, called Big Iron Cheesecakes. And then I was, uh, I was a uh, symphonic black metal musician um, in my twenties, and uh, wow. yeah, so it's it's all these things. Like I've always tried to do whatever I like and do it at least just a little bit more than uh, than than most other people around me, kind of thing. Uh, that that kind of sounds arrogant, but it's the truth. Like I wanted to, I wanted to have the cheesecake business. I wanted to rock that band i wanted to um you know i learned about fitness became a personal trainer certified personal trainer and i've been trying to uh feel my way through what that business has to offer me um as well as how i can fit my lifestyle into being a personal trainer which which has been quite a quite a journey and adventure uh i was yeah. pretty lazy for a long time with it 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's the best thing you can do in this life, you know, do, yeah. do uh, what excites you, what gets you all passionate, right? Uh, I've heard the opposite of that, though. I've heard that uh, you shouldn't do the things that you're passionate about, but I don't believe in that. I'm not for who, that thought. Who would say that? You know, hustlers and entrepreneurs mm. that are like, I, you know, that side of the spectrum. And, but I'm more on the, no, I got to love what I'm doing or else I'm going to hate my fucking life. Yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah, you're probably a, a nurturer like myself, somebody who lives uh, like passionately. Definitely you are that. Um, and that's something too, is it's always, I've always had to have some sort of passion. Uh, and this, uh, like the, the, the fitness thing, like I've always chose to keep a full-time job um, just to hold it down basically. And so that, you know, as you can imagine, that kind of, that can put a, uh, a roadblock into being a personal trainer when you're servicing other people kind of thing. Like you need to be able to adapt to their lifestyle. So follow fitness's primary intention from the beginning was for me to figure out how I can still live my lifestyle um, and give clients the maximum value that I could possibly offer them. Not necessarily always wanting to have a full roster of clients. One or two at a time is fine because I have a full-time job. Right, and, and I'm doing this because I love it. I want to help people. I want I want people to feel the things that I felt as I was progressing through fitness to this point, and that I still do. That's awesome. Now, Fallout Fitness uh, is that like an actual? Do you have an actual gym, or is it like a private studio? Just um, it's it's the private studio that you see uh, in the videos. It's my converted garage, um, how, which is how, beautiful, how by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love it. It's so like uh, grungy and uh, I don't know, like Batman-y, like your Batman shirt right now. You know, <laughs> Thank like, you. That's yeah. who I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's my, my throwing knife range and my gym. And I, uh, I bark at people when they call it the garage. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Holes, arrow holes in the garage door and all. Talking about that. So you're, you're into <laughs> like targets and shit. Like I saw a post of a mace and then you had like knives like all around it and i think you were talking about the name roland right and oh I think it's yeah a, yeah that was a while ago that's yep yep yeah uh, so i'm a spy i spy on people but anyways no this is uh, what we do you, yeah you you named him after a stephen like a stephen king book is that yes i did correct do you want to go into that a little bit yeah yeah i'd love to okay so i uh um right around the time actually i picked up steel mace okay so uh picking up the steel mace also came kind of at a difficult time and this was just coincidence but at that time i also began reading the uh the dark tower series actually i have one right here yes number three, <laughs> number three the wastelands um so i started reading that series and uh from the first two or three pages the uh the character um the character roland the protagonist of the stories just resonated with me like like so hard i couldn't believe i can't exactly even uh articulate exactly why to this day even though i've been through this twenty thousand page uh epic like four or five times over the last few years um it's there's there's something about the acumen and the personality and uh the progression of the character um the progression of the character as an expression of stephen king's progression as a man um was uh resonating with me and the other characters and the uh the world which they live in the um the romanticized age of chivalry and uh and these gunslinging knights uh just fascinated me and even to today i find my self growing and changing and taking examples from the, the, the personality traits uh, put forward from Roland. So he's a, uh, yeah, he, he's a, a descendant of, of King Arthur in a time when uh, after a nuclear war, when the world thousands of years after the world had moved on. And uh, this is uh, the, like the, the position of chivalry, a, a knight applied to, had had the modern age far in in the history uh so this uh well that's basically it like i i don't really have a much better way to uh to 
talk about that right now. I would have to, yeah. I would have to go in and, and really write it down sort of thing to articulate it. Yeah. Properly. Which is fine. Whatever. I'll make sure that I add like a link to the book. So if someone's like interested, they're like, I really want to read that book. They can just go read it, you know, oh, pl- but that sounds fantastic. Do. Please do. Yeah. I would actually, I'll probably repost now. I'll repost that post about uh, the meet my mace post with Roland in it. It'll yeah. Well, I actually, I've read it and it, I got it. It's awesome. That's why I had to bring it up in the podcast. I was like, I got to ask him about this stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's really powerful to me. The, the content of that book and what resonates with me is extremely powerful in um, the personnel in my personality or what I feel it means to be a man in this day and age. Yeah. And you know what? It, it kind of leads me to the whole uh, naming your still mace, you know, like I, I think where in the hell can you name something in fitness? You know what I mean? Like that's what yep. makes still mace so special. And then like the mace community is all for it. And we're, we know what we're talking about here, but like in case you're, you're a listener and you're, you're just getting into still mace, you know, that's one thing you might find around uh, Instagram and online. We name our maces. Yeah, it's it's we we build a relationship with them, and they they become uh, they become a part of us. Uh, same reason I I really I named Fallout Fitness Fallout Fitness. I'm a video game geek, and I was gonna the, ask about that too. I was like, I know it has to do with Fallout, I, but I yeah. just wanted it to come from you. Yes, it definitely does, and uh, not that it's. It's overly productive in the world outside of my own imagination, but I have spent an ungodly amount of hours playing these games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm not ashamed of it, uh, although it's, you know, again, it's maybe not the most productive. Um, sometimes I use the name now just as a reminder of myself to not, not be that lazy kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> when you're doing things like that so repetitively and I get to a point where I realize that my, uh, my reward systems were, were, uh, were built right into the games. So, right. <laughs> uh, that, that disconnection from reality had to get put on the shelf <laughs> if I wanted to do anything real with my life. Yeah. But it's pretty badass that you could step back and have that self-awareness. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, hard for you. some people to do that. So they yeah, I for that. So, um, what do you, what do you think about steel mace? Do you think it, it's changed your life in some way or form? Absolutely. Absolutely yeah. has. Um, I have grown. Uh, I've grown exponentially since I picked up the mace. Not only because of the mace, but because of same similar processes that began when I opened the first page of the Dark Tower books. Uh, it uh, it gave me an outlet. It gave me hope that I could connect these two pieces of my personality, my love of fitness, and uh, and my expression. Um, I was always looking for something that could be more, you know, more portable and something that I could, I could feel that was more my own. Um, and the fact that I was bored with the other types of training that I, that I had uh, experienced previously. Right. What I think of it going forward in the future is uh, I want to spread all of Mace love to all of the people. Um, and, and, you know, I, I'm sure that I get a, uh, I'm sure that people get sick of hearing me talk about it. <laughs> I always think that too, but you know what? I, I'm not sick of it. Keep doing it, man. No shame. Yeah. So in the, in the future, like I, I want to, uh, you know, I want to put Mace in hands uh, and I want to continue growing my skill. Like I have, I only have upwards to go. Like I consider myself a, a baby in the world of fitness um, and in the world of, mace training now i can say that but it was at the rick brown sitting at at a, at a boston pizza with all of the others that went to the canadian rick brown certification um i started talking about something about myself and my mace experience and i was realizing that i was doing like i typically would do and remaining extremely humble and i said to myself or said to everybody at that table and i was like you know what i uh I'm tired of like deprecating myself with humility is like, I've worked really, really hard over the last year, um, a year and a half to get better with the mace. And it's brought me right here to this table with all you high level motherfuckers. Like I considered all those people to be, you know, a step above myself 
and the pursuit that we were all joined together for or in fitness in general and uh, there's so much i could learn so many examples like a uh, another very important coach to me was there doing the certification with me um and it gives me like I, i'm proud of it like i'm proud of uh where how far i've come um i don't know exactly how if i can articulate how it's had an effect on my personality but it's uh, it definitely has uh maybe sort of just a, the time the moment that i accepted that maybe the steel mace was like what i had been waiting for and not knowing it um was the moment that i could also let go of fooling myself or i was just you know honest with myself about what my intentions were with follow fitness with my training experience i had just come off of a uh, a very interesting learning experience with my original kettlebell coach um, doing business with him uh, and that didn't end up panning out but it was it was a great strength building exercise emotionally that's for sure um, that you know what that's really fucking beautiful to hear though it's awesome and and I'm glad that you got to sit around you know people that made you kind of aware of how you were kind of being too humble a little bit and you know you earned it man it was fireworks it really was yeah. and sitting sitting there with all those people just solidified it and if it, if it hadn't already been solidified like that was it that was the moment where i was like i belong doing this and it's one of the first times in my life that i have really felt that i was actually really good at something and uh and so I'm just going to like, I'm just going to ride this train till the wheels fall off. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Definitely. Uh, I met Mr. Maceman. I say like two years ago and not going to lie. He has that like, and I know it's, he's probably not the only one. I'm sure it was the whole group, but he was definitely one of the guys who kind of like definitely made me feel like, okay, I need to keep doing this. Like keep going. You got this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, Rick Brown himself has uh has some of these amazing personality traits, sort of the, the, the acumen, the, the way uh, that he carries himself and expresses himself and communicates is something that I look up to. Uh, like I have in a, a number of posts, I've called him Uncle Rick. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it really does feel like that to me. Like he is another man um, like Roland uh, in the books uh, that, that I want to model myself after uh especially as i as i grow older like uh just the guy is just so darn charming too <laughs> he is and he's and the funny thing is you, you see him and he's like this big tall big guy and he's just like exactly so charming and so kind and that's that's something that resonates with me too about him i think is that we're uh we're built the same like and uh Maybe that's something that lends to uh, lends to the, the mace, like having big long arms, all that reach. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe that's why I was attracted to you, to having you on here too. I just had this feeling, like I was like, I need to have this guy on here. Maybe you're already kind of like, you know what I mean? Your vibes are already spreading that that mace unity, that mace love and passion. I I hope so. I hope so. I uh, so when I started, um, one of the really really important parts of this wave was the. Uh, last year's uh coach rt3s uh, mace 360 challenge mm -hmm. um that was that was 115 days of new stuff every day and every single day i worked on it and mastered it and those moves um became a part of me and that's that is something like what i was talking about before that's when i said i was like i'm really proud of that and acknowledging that like uh help give me confidence and boost me up and help uh help fuel this train that i'm trying to ride the wheels off of and i'm glad you brought up the challenges because there's there's a lot of us throwing out challenges i don't know if you've done some as a coach but i mean if you're listening and, and you go on instagram like a lot of us are throwing these challenges and if you know you're listening to ian i've, I've done them too and i'm a fucking coach i mean just do them they honestly you'll feel so great when when you're done uh you know at the end of like day 30 you're like fuck yeah. yeah you know i completed this and it's just and sometimes you know the moves are real real simple or real real beginner but do them anyways mm -hmm. dude you got to master the the simplest ones yeah exactly so i spend like over an hour a day working 
just on like, you know, a simple forward press or something like that. Like that's, uh, there's value in that. Yeah. And there really is. It, it, and it becomes a part of your, your, you know, your body's muscle memory it becomes a part of who you are being able to, uh, just with the, have the confidence to know that when it comes under command that you've got it. Yeah. And I mean, those basic movements turn into, you know, the more advanced stuff later on, like your flow, you put them together and it just turns into something super beautiful down the line. But you got to get those first, like how you said, you got to get those. Got to crawl, got to crawl first. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So what, what are your thoughts about like, um, or let me go back a little bit. So how long have you been using the snow mace? Um, for me, uh, so May of 2018, okay. um, is when I first got, um, my first mace. I don't even like it anymore, but, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, its name is NACA and it was uh, a reference to the, the name of my old band. Um, so I got it and I, you know, I started, I started, uh, Role playing that I was a steel mace flow artist, and uh, and that was incredibly it was fun but ineffective, um, because I hadn't really learned anything yet. And uh, one thing that I, you know, I will in a future I'll caution against actually to anybody is right after I started, there was a challenge, um, and it was uh, it was for doing a, a hundred swings a day for an entire month. Um, however, this was before I even knew how to actually do a 360 properly. So, you know, all I was doing was standing in front of my camera and, uh, putting time lapse on because that takes a long time. I jumped in a little bit late. So I was like, all righty, I'm going to do 200 a day. Great idea. Uh, without actually knowing how to properly swing a mace, uh, moving forward, that resulted in some, uh, and some injury, uh, some, some elbow tendonitis, um, which caused me problems for months afterward. But that, what I learned from that, um, and from coming across, uh, coach RT three and steel mace education, um, workshops or, and workshops, the stuff that I learned from that led me to the mace 360 challenge, which led me to, learning the skills going crawling learning to crawl first and uh now i consider myself to be good at those things and uh yeah okay well minus the humility to be pretty darn good at doing the the, the standard swings as well right and thank you for fucking sharing that because i feel like a lot of uh, people would probably kind of not talk about that because they're kind of embarrassed by it or they just feel like oh i don't i don't know but uh you know same thing with me when i first started i went for the swing but you know what i did i i swung the mace and uh, i felt something really weird like off the back and then it just stayed in the corner like for months because i was like nah i can't do that shit so yeah. uh yeah i give you a high five for sharing that story dude and i really hope that if someone's sh like listening right now and it's their, it's their first time they're picking up the mace that they take what you just uh, told and they take it to the heart because yeah, I, I honestly think people should find a coach and hopefully yeah. if they're in your area, they can, you know, work with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm here. Definitely. Um, yeah. It's really important, especially like you, the swing looks like something easy, but it's super complex and, uh, and I don't like, I, I will never prescribe it to a client um, until they have uh, they have all these mace basics that I'm working on these videos right now. Until they have them all down pat, and I'm confident that uh, that they can properly swing a mace without hurting themselves. It's my it's my intention to never cause any sort of injury, right? Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I think that's that's a really important thing to put out there. That you know, the swing is one of the. And it's funny. It's the most popular exercise, in still mace, but it's also it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, and then that's what draws people in, and I totally get it. That's what drew me in, you in. But uh, at the end of the day, it is a very complicated exercise. Uh, extremely beneficial too. Yeah. You know, like I I understand why people love it i understand why people see it and want to do it especially because as we were saying before it's it's something completely aside 
from everything else that you've experienced, even if you're experienced with kettlebells. Right. Uh, yeah, because I mean, we have swings in the kettlebell world, but it's not not our kind of swing. Ours not is much like, yeah. yeah, the 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 three sixty is just it's just unique. It's its own thing, and I think when it came in in the fitness market, everyone went gaga over it. But it's good to talk about about that stuff. But um, so that, that the reason why I asked you uh, when you started Still Mace is because I want to know what your thoughts are about Still Mace in the future. So, like, what vision do you have about it? Do you think, uh, do you think we're going to grow strong? Do you think uh, there's going to be a lot of separation? Uh, you know, what's your thoughts on it? Um, well, I think it can definitely grow strong. Definitely. Um, I think that it is slowly, uh, well, I can't say taking over. Um, however, it's uh, already firmly established in our primal memory, right? Uh, like, you know, not, I'm not suggesting that we're all, you know, descendants from Indian wrestlers, but <laughs> this is another reason that I think it resonates with everybody is that it's something, although complex, it's something that seems supernatural. Um, from just that rotation of your shoulders all the way to, you know, some sort of uh, ancient warrior idea of being able to fling bodies over your shoulder. Uh, this is this is something that will grow, especially if all of us keep the, the Mace unity in mind. Um, it's growing faster, you know, it's growing faster every single day. Like, you know, look at Mr. Mace Man all over the world, right? Um, right. And uh, like Leo Savage's growing army and the, uh, the, the technicality and the precision and the uh, competence, competency required to be a part of uh, like a, a coach RT3 engagement, one of the challenges or something like that. So if we can all sort of come together, then it will definitely grow stronger as a massive force. Um, however, we're tribal beings as humans. So uh, as far as I wouldn't want division, it's not an unnatural thing. Um, we're all, the, the different modalities technically like with with flow or traditional swing or the strength and conditioning like new breed style or rt3 is like these things can they can all be true at the same time you know they don't have to cancel each other out I'm not saying that i don't want the unity but i think that they are not i don't i don't think that it's a bad thing that they're developing in sort of an, an isolated path like we can come together and right. people like yourself um or fred moore from steel maze nation um you guys are the you guys are the forces that are going to drive that and i want to be an example of that i'm not necessarily as good at conversation as somebody that has a podcast um i don't know if i have the endurance to keep on doing it constantly but I'll try, <laughs> you know, um, I'll let you guys run the podcast, uh, but I definitely want to be a part of this world. It's funny that you mentioned that because, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I don't even know what episode this is anymore, but this is the third season. And by the way, in case you didn't know, uh, you are the first episode in the third season. So you are my oh. opener. I'm so excited about it. Thank you very much. Uh, but I honestly, it's funny that you say that. I don't really, uh, I'm actually really introverted. So this is actually a way for me to exercise, like, you know, communicating with people and, you know, sharing, you know, moments with them. But yeah, I mean, we're here and, and, you know, um, and I'm, and I'm really happy that you, that you mentioned what you did throughout well, the thank you. Yeah. I think maybe with, with the mace too, um, that level of introversion, the independence of, of, uh, of the steel mace, I don't know whether it's, again, it's this, this primal attraction to it, but it allows, it allows introverted people some expression, and it has turned into a connection, a, a tool for connection. And whether it's, you know, through this tiny little camera and my cell phone and this conversation with you, or whether, you know, I'm standing, like, we have a very touristy city in Stratford, Ontario. It's uh, the second biggest uh, Shakespearean festival in the world. So 
there's a lot of people here so I can go out and I can get a whole bunch of attention doing some flow or swinging some mace in some tourist areas of Stratford. And that helps me to connect with other people as well. Right. One of the things that helped me solidify confidence in the fact that I could really do something with, with follow fitness instead of just continue to stagnate with it, which is what I did for a long time. Yeah. 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 Oh man. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I guess we'll move on. We'll move on from that. But what, you know, one of the things that I wanted to add in this podcast this, this year was uh, talking about favorite books and, uh, and why. So I don't know if you want to hit that. Uh, I guess it's an option, but do you have a favorite book and, and uh, why is this your favorite book? Well, we spent, we spent a few minutes talking about that already. Okay. Um, and, that, and that would be my answer to that question, really, okay. those, those books. Um, they're, uh, they're an everyday part of my life too. So I, I, uh, I've said before, like, I think in that meet my maze post, I was talking about how this is a very long epic. Like there is, there's seven books that are a couple thousand pages each. Um, Oh wow. Okay. And what I love is that, uh, every time I open the first page, uh, of the first book, I am this person at this moment. And I love getting to the end of the whole epic and looking back at those months and seeing how I've grown since. And I can, I can sometimes actually like even still after several cycles, I can still pick out what was effective and the lessons that I learned, the things that I picked up on, whether about myself or about the rest of the world or about um, the lessons and the, and the way the gunsling, gunslingers live, you know, that's just something that's extremely attractive to me because I'm, I'm a, a target sports enthusiast as well. <laughs> right. So, right. Those are definitely my favorite books. So like, I consider myself to be uh, a, a, a gunslinger and a maze slinger. And I love that you, you chose a book that, you know, I'm a big nonfiction person. So I'm really glad that, you know, you chose a fiction book. Yeah. Thanks. That's awesome. Uh, well, I'm, I love, I love fantasy. I'm, I'm, uh, as I said, I'm a video game nerd and I, I love recreated worlds. I just, uh, I like to be, I like to be able to be silly and, and allow, well, I'm not sure exactly silly is the word, but I like to be able to allow myself a suspension of disbelief. Um, right, right because it helps us be creative. It helps me fulfill myself and always comes back with some sort of reflection of the world around me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. And, and I love that you brought all those books up. I had no idea that it was a seven book series though. That's insane. Yeah. I, you have some patience. Now. <laughs> Technically eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Eight. Oh God. That's a lot. I would I, honestly, I like yeah, my yeah, patience uh, is like, so like, I don't know. I could probably read like one book, like a month. So how long did it take you to like finish the whole well, series? Well, uh, the first time around, um, it took me only a couple months. I, uh, I had read the first four books paper, um, and then sort of did a hybrid, uh, audio book listen, um, to the last, the rest of the series. And then pretty much constant basis. Like I, uh, I have a, a lucky, uh, I'm lucky to have the job that I do. One of the things that is a benefit of it is that I can throw on my headphones and nobody bothers me all day right long, on. basically. I, I'm a, I'm a high school custodian as my day job. So awesome. my, uh, like I, yeah, yeah, I put my headphones on and I can, I've had this opportunity in this job as for a self-directed education, anything that I want to learn, I I can access that information because of uh, all of the access to information that we have these days. But also part of each one of those days is usually spent listening to uh, a section of a, of a dark tower book. Yeah. And so I get to, again, I get to the, from the start to the end and I can reflect on the ways that I've grown uh, since I began them again. Uh, the first book is very short, uh, and uh, and like you talk about your patience, but you could pick that up and give it a listen and get. Uh, I, I encourage anybody if I've piqued any interest, 
read at least the first one. You might get a little bit of, uh, you might get some idea of what I'm talking about with my introspection in relation to the book and the characters. Awesome. And now that what's your favorite book? Uh, I would have to say, well, it's not fiction and it would have to be, uh, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. It's the only one that actually like okay, so it hit me because it stuck to me, you know. Good what? Well, there's a lot of agreements I know in you're it. I think, doing yeah, yeah, no, I'm no, saying. go for it. Yeah, uh, you know, one of the ones that stuck to me is not to take anything personally, you know, because a lot of times we go in the world and uh, we think mm-hmm. that uh, just because someone was a dick to you that uh, has something to do with you, but it has nothing to do with you at all. You know, we all have. Uh, I guess we we just have to uh, not take things so seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, that is a valuable lesson. And I'm sure there's times where uh, people have had to remind themselves that, of that lesson while dealing with me. Cause, uh, I, again, at times I feel that, uh, facts don't care about your feelings and they sometimes upset people that way. So hopefully yeah. other people can reflect on that agreement as well. <laughs> I hope that yeah. I have that unspoken agreement. Yeah. And I tend to be more of a, an empath. So I have a lot of empathy. So sometimes when I, you know, when I see people hating or talking shit or being some way in the mace community, I tend to, to feel it a lot. You know, I'm a real sensitive person. So uh, that one really, I think of, out of all the agreements in that book, that's definitely one that, that I take to heart and exercise. Well, I would like to read it. Maybe I will check it out. Uh, Having said all those things about myself, like that is also something about me. Like I, I, I'm a nurturer. I'm, I'm, am extremely empathetic and caring. Um, and I, I want, I want to help people feel good. And that's like, right. that, that has been a major weakness a lot of times in my life. But <laughs> I know how to, I know how to manage it now. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and we definitely have to have a balance. Like you were saying with the whole humble thing and, now we're getting into the whole, you know, caring and stuff like that. You definitely have to have a balance because then people can tend to run your shit over. So totally get you on that aspect yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, is there any pointers, any tips when it comes to Still Mace from you as a coach uh, for anyone getting started with Still Mace? Uh, what do you recommend? What do I recommend as far as equipment or practice? Practice. Uh, Crawl before you walk. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll plug myself and the work that I'm doing right now. Um, but anybody teaching mace basics, like my intention right now with these videos that I've been doing is to break it down to extremely small, simple little tidbits. And not to deprecate the people that are listening to it, but people want that. People like, you know, the you watch one video, you don't get a choice of what's happening. It's like it's this small little tidbit you take it and eat it up and it will benefit you in your mace practice. Anybody else that's putting forward that kind of incremental instruction, uh, follow that because I know from experience what happens when you don't, you know, I, uh, um, not so much for weight, but one, uh, inspiring thing that, uh, Mr. Mace man will say, and he put it this way is that, uh, if you chase after heavy weights, quickly injuries will chase after you well that applies to skills as well yeah i'm that's a good quote and i remember mr mazeman saying that so i'm glad you brought it up on here too um and i couldn't agree more man and and so when you say tidbits do do you mean like you just give out like one tip and i was like that's the one thing you're gonna get for the day yep yep definitely so i'm doing this series of videos called mace basics so um okay you know, yesterday, I think you saw mine, uh, yesterday it was basically just on wrist adduction and abduction and how important okay. that is, um, to reduce the flail in your mace practice. Uh, that is literally what I said, literally, uh, that actually caused my injury. That, that is definitely, I had, I had some disruption in my, uh, forearms while it, bilateral epicondylitis tennis and golfer's elbow at the same time because of just not taking care in what I did with the mace when I first picked it up. So my, I guess at the core my intention is because I care about people picking up the mace and I want them to be successful with it. And I don't want that to happen to anybody else. Yeah. So this is like a personal experience thing too. Like it happened to you and now you're like, dude, like this is, 
I learned from it. Here's, here's what I learned from it. Here's, here's, and on top of that, you're giving it out for free. I mean, honestly, like if you're listening, go out and check out his videos. Uh, this guy's doing a phenomenal job with that. Now, where can people you. find you online? So I haven't mentioned your Instagram handle, so go ahead and give them that. And then do you have a website or a Facebook and then, um, go into like your services and any products you may have? Um, well, okay. So I have, uh, there's at fallout underscore fit underscore Canada. That's my Instagram page. That's probably the best or easiest way to get a hold of me. Um, then I have fallout fitness being my Facebook page, um, or Ian Tom being my personal page. Anybody is welcome to come to either one of them. I'll be warm and receiving and excited to hear from you. Um, I don't have a website as of yet. Um, considering putting, starting a, a YouTube channel soon. I uh, don't know when. I don't know when website will come because uh, really I'm taking advantage of this these free uh, these free resources that we have and the social media resources are improving every day. And I mean, you can say that as far as a broader sense, you get funneled due to algor algorithms in social media. But that's you know for something like what we're doing, that's what we want. Right. Right. And uh, I'm, I'm loving it. So those are the two best ways. Uh, and, you know, you get a hold of me there and I'll send you my text number if you want to talk. That's that's fine, too. All right. Awesome. Now, people can work with you in person. Can they work with you online? Like, do you do remote training uh, or anything like that? Yeah, I, I will. I don't have a solid system for the uh, for online training now. However, one of the projects that I was working on with my coach earlier, in, one of my coaches earlier in the year had me dip my toes in the world of online training. So I'm going to be developing more with that uh, in the future. And I will, I will personally communicate with, with everybody like uh, that, that wants to, I don't need a large roster of clients, which means that I can pay some good attention to everybody that I have working with me. Um, so that would be basically online. Yes, I will do. I am actually working on setting up my first MACE class right now. And then um, uh, I don't have a, I don't have a lot, lot going on. So I do a lot of these shout outs, right? So I already did. And then we got uh, uh, at Diary of a Fitness Junkie, Kristen, I'm going to be working on setting up some uh, workshops with her in the near future as well, because she lives not too far away from me. Oh, right on. I had no idea. Cool. Thank you. Hopefully that goes well. And uh, like I will be, yeah. So dipping my toes in the classes soon. So I'll be, I've put Mace in a couple hands already, but I'll be doing it on an official level within the next couple of weeks. Right on. Five, it was, it was about five minutes and uh, the, the, the class that I was looking for got filled up immediately. Like in about five minutes, everybody that I invited accepted and they're on board. Wow. Right, right on, right on. So I'm so excited. Is there, is there anything like uh, exciting, like events or anything like that that you want to just give out besides uh, classes and services and stuff like that? Anything coming up? Um, nothing for sure. No. Okay. Oh, no, it's all, it's all just in the works. I didn't really commit to uh, instruction until I was certified. So okay. this is just the ball's just rolling now. Like I've been doing personal training for years on a sort of slow level, but this is – this is what I had the bandwidth for. And again, like riding it till the wheels fall off. So uh, stay tuned to uh, my social medias and, and, and you'll get aware of what's happening. Right on. All right, guys, stay tuned. Um, thank you so much, Ian, for, for saying yes. Um, and I really appreciate you. And I, and hopefully, I hope that the listeners really enjoy this episode. I mean, I know I enjoyed having you on here. Um, if there, if there, is there anything else you want to say? Um, well, uh, as, as you'll always hear me say, is a, a quote from the uh, Dark Tower world is how they sign off or send off people uh, there is, I'll say, uh, long days and pleasant nights. Right on. I love that. And may the universe always flow with you. Thank you very much.